Peter, did you want me to go ahead and start? Or are, you, are we waiting? I thought um, <clears throat> you were starting and then okay. I thought you were doing some interesting exercise to really <laughs> that, so it all worked out. <laughs> That's what I was afraid of. <laughs> I think the, the interesting exercise was doing us. <laughs> it, it, it was interesting because uh, I was feeling the awkwardness in my body. Like, is God thinking I'm starting? And then, I'm like, yeah, let's run with it. This feels good. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> uh, uh, um, welcome, everybody. <laughs> welcome to the Embodiment Hour at the STOA. Um, I'm Skylar and uh, I'm sure you know Peter um, and I'm getting to know a lot of you, a lot of familiar faces here. So thanks for being here. Um, yeah, so um, maybe some of you, I know some of you were here last week and, uh, but this is also the first in a three-part series. And so, um, yeah, so welcome if you're new. Um, this is an experiment. And uh, I was telling Peter before we got on that this is definitely working on me. Um, I'm sure you've had that experience too, where you, <clears throat> you open a container or you start a project, maybe it's a creative project or a piece of art or whatever it is. And uh, you think you're gonna work the thing. And then the thing is just like, oh yeah, watch this. <laughs> And that's how this thing is is doing me right now. So um, I guess the all I want to say, or the reason I wanted to say that is because I'm going to just invite you all into the process, um, into the mystery and the unfolding of what it is we're creating here. Because uh, I haven't done this before, an embodiment hour. Um, and so it really, I have a sense that there is something this wants to become and it's in the process of becoming that, but it needs all of us to sort of nudge it in, in different, you know, in the directions we feel um, as we feel them. And, and the signal that I'm getting and that moment there at the beginning where we had that, that space, that unknown space, the signal that I'm getting is that um, it has a very strong, it will really help us. It really, this embodiment hour has a strong impulse. It really does want to work on us. It really does want to come through. Um, and it has an, I'm going to say an agenda <laughs> for us. And so our job is just to, to listen and to feel and, and to be um, playful um, to the degree we can. Uh, because it's it's some of it's hard, right? Some of it's deep, some of it's uncomfortable, some of it's awkward. Um, but it does feel like that's something we're all we're all getting the message to become better with too, right? Like Peter's, um, I haven't been yet, but to your social your awkward social theater experiment, um, I've been thinking about that a lot. I can't wait to check it out. Um, but yeah, I think that's part of the message. And um, and it's just, you know, I was, I was thinking about this coming into today. It's like the message that I was getting for myself this, this morning and kind of over the last 24 hours or so is, was this like, oh my God, we're so civilized. That, that was the message for so, and maybe it's for me. I mean, maybe some of you are, are more feral. Um, I like to think of myself as pretty expressed and I can have my wild moments, but what I was, what I was being shown was that um, just at this point in history, in these human bodies, we are really civilized and our emotions are civilized um our um, interactions our social our culture our dynamics the way we communicate like there is just so much um like the visual that I, I get recently is of like the concrete like a sidewalk 
where you see the weeds or the grass pushing through. Um, and I think it was Tupac actually did the, the, he had the, the rose and concrete, the rose grows through the concrete, but that, that feeling of the earth pushing up through the concrete of our culture, um, is a little bit the flavor of what, um, I'm really excited about what feels really exciting and, um, like it's kind of what I'm really longing for. Um, it feels like a really important part, part of our healing. Um, and so, uh, so here we are at embodiment hour where feeling is healing. Um, okay. So what I'd like to do actually is just sit to start to, just to see, um, where you're at, uh, I got a nice reminder this week um, from Peter, actually, we've been discussing embodiment as a journey. And um, he reminded me how important it is to know where you're at as a starting point, right? So whatever the situation you're entering, whether it's a conversation, a meeting, a course, a session, um, that kind of taking stock of, and, and this is actually a beautiful morning practice um, and part of my practice to do just like an internal scan. Like what is the situation in there? What am I carrying? What am I bringing forth into this interaction? And so before we get into the content for today, let's do, um, let's do a quick scan. So if you'll join me in this, it'll just be a couple of minutes of going inside uh, and feeling. Um, so if you want to make yourself comfortable, that's great. And if you want to close your eyes, that's usually helpful for me, not necessary, but helpful. And I think to the degree you can relax. And just bring your, I'm gonna do a little synchronization of our awareness, our perception, our breathing, our body. And so just for the first moment, don't do anything but sit and settle. And maybe touch in with your impulse to be here. Whatever it is that brought you here, that compelled you to spend this hour with us. And just remind yourself or touch in with that. And why this matters to you. And see if connecting with that choice, being in connection with your choice to be here helps you settle into the body a little bit more. And we're first gonna take a look at the physical body so just noticing any sensations in the body. Noticing where there's tension or tensing. And just noticing the quality of your physical body today. Does it feel good? Does it feel heavy and lethargic or does it feel light? 
Does it feel flexible? Does it feel rigid? Just, we're just taking a snapshot. Noticing if there are any aches or pains. And also noticing anything that feels good, that feels pleasant, enjoyable about being in your body, your physical body. And now moving a layer more subtle, we're gonna look at the emotional body. So just noticing if there are any emotional tones present for you. Do you feel relaxed, open? Are you carrying anything with you right now from a previous conversation or interaction? Yeah, we're not trying to change it. We're just taking that snapshot again so we know where we're at. Is there anything tugging on your heart? Or any residue can be really honest with yourself. And a reminder that numbness is a feeling. So if you feel kind of nothing, that's also noteworthy. And then moving into the mental body, we'll take a look at the mind. Thoughts. Noticing if the mind is busy or slow. Noticing if there's excess caffeine or maybe you feel tired, whatever is going on in the mental. Not changing it, just taking that snapshot. Ah. Oh, this is what's going on with me. And because it will change, it will constantly change, but we're just bringing more awareness to the process. And finally, noticing the noticing. So the awareness itself, what is noticing these dimensions. And seeing if you can find some space. And then slowly coming back into this room and bringing, maintaining that inner awareness just as you open your eyes and you can notice the room that you're in, notice the screen, notice the folks on the screen. Great.
All right, so. Um, that's a nice, that's a really nice just check in with the self, that physical kind of the grossest layer of being to the emotional, to the mental, to the space. Um, all right, so our provocation today, so um, the format, if you haven't been here before, um, the format is that we bring in or I'll be bringing in a piece of content or culture, um, trying to keep it topical so that we're um, you know, coherent with what's happening in the zeitgeist or with in the world or within our communities or the collective. Uh, so I like to keep the provocation or the piece of content short for now. This is part of the experiment. It might actually turn out that's better that we read an article before we arrive here or we watch a video before we get here because I was noticing some of the content I was interested in bringing in was eight minutes or 10 minutes. And I was like, I don't know, it's too long for an hour um, for our hour session. So um, yeah, so for now it's part of the experiment. I'm just gonna keep it brief, like three, four minute piece of content. Um, was very challenging to choose the content this week. <laughs> and so I'm inviting your help with that. So. Um, Moving forward, if this is something you're enjoying and you want to continue to be a part of, I'm definitely going to ask for your help uh, sending me content that we could look at together. And a great way to do that is to choose something that provoked you somehow. I know I've been provoked many, many times this week, <laughs> but um, I wanted, I said this last time, I, I didn't, I don't want to bring in something like absolutely uh, polarizing and trauma triggering right from the get-go. Like I think it would be good for this group or our group or this session to begin to build some trust and like a language, a culture before we jump into something like super uh, triggering in the culture. And I was also aware of bringing in a piece of media that was really biased um, or, or just one-sided. And that is makes it really hard. <laughs> and the, I mean, that alone was an incredible lesson. I was like, wow, it's really hard to find content that's not totally biased in one direction or another. Um, so the content that I've settled on this week is a short f uh, film or video that the STOA presented a couple of days ago. It's called Initiation to Game B. Uh, Peter hosted a session with the filmmakers and um, the video is now on YouTube and it's about 20 minutes long. So what I'm gonna do is just share um, like a clip basically, or two clips. Uh, did anyone see this or was anyone at the session? Oh my gosh, amazing. Wow, that's a lot of people. <laughs> okay, great. Well, so that, that will be really helpful. If you've seen it, then you're gonna have full context for, um, for what I'm gonna share. Uh, if you haven't seen it, just quickly, I'll say um, it's, uh, let's say this, do people know what I'm referring to when I say game B? This is a yes. Okay, no, some people are, are saying no. Okay, great. Um, so very quickly, um, it's, it's kind of a, oh, Peter, do you mind? What, how would you uh, define game B? <laughs> Maybe very simply, game. In order to understand game B, you got to understand game A. Uh, and game A is the collective game that the world is playing that's coming to an end. Uh, and if we continue to play it, we'll self-terminate as a species. And game B is the new game uh, that we don't know what it looks like, but there's a, a glimpse and a sense of what it could be. So I think maybe that's a accurate and a little bit poetic way to describe it. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, so this video is meant to help people um, 
begin the transition or begin to envision or imagine what the transition from game A to game B could look like. Uh, it uses the, it's like a video game is the device. So I'm gonna play the, vi I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play, I think it's about three minutes of the beginning of the video and then I'm gonna stop. And then I'm gonna play another couple minutes later in the video. And so my um, suggestion for how to, uh, like how to work with this provocation, um, I'm just hesitating because I'm wondering if I should bring in my, I have a slide. Uh, so the point is not whether or not we like the video or we like whatever the, the piece of culture is that I bring in for the, this is really more challenging than it seems because <laughs> we're very attached to our likes and dislikes, right? So, I mean, the uh, attachment and aversion in us is very, very strong. So, um, and I know I had to watch this video several times before I could move beyond just a basic, like, I, I don't like it or I like it. Um, so, so that's, that's the invitation in these, these sessions. And I think we can, we will get better and better as a group at doing this because from week to week, I could bring in something from a new source you hate. I could bring in something from an artist you hate. Um, and that's, that's interesting. <laughs> that in itself is an experience, you know, why are we hating this thing? Um, and so, yeah, so whatever your, your feeling or your thoughts, let's say that, whatever your thoughts about the video, um, what we're trying to get to is anything it provokes in terms of in the body and are any underlying feelings. Um, so, uh, yeah, again, another just moment of transparency, something that's challenging for me is to know how much uh, preamble, like how much setup to give. Um, so I would, I would appreciate feedback on that as we go through this. You might be like, hey, I needed to know more before we went in, or you might be like, stop talking, just show the video. Um, but uh, yeah, so as you watch the video, um, I would invite you to sort of step back into where you were a minute ago when we were in the inner awareness practice. If you have, if you're a note taker, a nice way to do this is like on a piece of paper or, you know, can type it in the notes on your computer or whatever, um, sensations and feelings. So sensations, it's like, huh. My chest is tight. I have no feeling in my legs. I actually don't feel myself. Oh, shoulders tight. You know, ooh, stomach hurts. Ooh, something in the heart tugging. These are sensations that you might experience. Um, energy in the mind, a lot of activity up here. Um, so those are some, you know, some ideas around some sensation. And then feelings would be like, um, disgust, <laughs> uh, joy, love, oh, you know, a uh, fondness, whatever, uh, you know, whatever, and it doesn't have to be, it's kind of just like, as it's coming, it's like, huh, you know, curious, don't know, not sure what that one is, <laughs> blank, there are a lot of possibilities just to have fun describing, like just be creative, describing what your experience is. Um, yeah, all right. So now I feel good that I can start the video unless there are any questions. All right, so I'm gonna share a screen. Megan Down is a writer and journalist, author of the book, The Problem With Everything, and host of the podcast, oh, Unspeakable. Sorry, wrong video. There we go.
What happened? You have been initiated. Huh? Let's move. We haven't much time. T time? For what? Until the parasite takes hold of you again. You're weak, but you now have eyes to see. What, what am I looking at? Where am I? Like most everyone you know, you have been hijacked by a parasite. The parasite was born of game A, the game you've been playing your whole life. It tells you how to think, feel, and what to do. On a journey. Uh, a journey? To where? A journey to Game B. The journey to Game B is a story about the relationship between humanity, technology, and nature. It's a story not only about survival, but the potential for thriving. You and your tribe will be among the first people to play Game B. We have traced our steps back to the beginning, just before the dawn of human civilization. Before Game A, there was the first game. The first game was our most enduring and successful game. A game we played for over 100,000 years. Our nomadic ancestors stood apart from their natural cohabitants in their special ability to adapt across all bioregions of the Earth. The key to their adaptability was culture, a new strategy for group cooperation. These early nomadic cultures operated within principles of wholeness and regeneration. The first game was, of course, multiplayer. Each player is necessary to sustain the principle of wholeness by stewarding the cycle of regeneration. All players must be present and respect each other's roles. Roles? I am the sage who seeks truth and ensures its transmission to the coming generations. My wisdom is that of the mind. I am the chief who seeks to build a better world for the coming generations. My wisdom is that of the body and its extensions. I am the Mitriac who gives life and purpose to the coming generations. My wisdom is that of the heart. Which role am I? As a Game B pioneer, you must do what is yours to do and bring together all of the necessary roles to sustain the principles of wholeness and regeneration. The parasite. It's waking up. We have to hurry. You mustn't allow the creature to take hold. Breathe deeply and keep your wisdom centers open. Come. Okay. So, um, all right. So this is obviously just a little piece, the beginning of a of a twenty minute film. They go on to explore the origins of culture and game A, and then they make it to and she sees game B. Um, so. Yeah, I think just working with even the little bit that you saw, anybody have anything uh, come up for them or anything they wanna share? It's no, uh, no wrong answers, uh, any reactions? Yeah, um, Victor. Yeah, so I had like this is timely. I just watched it yesterday, and uh, watching it again, like I, I think what I noticed most was uh, the body sensations of 
like a flash of electricity kind of coming up the, uh, uh, you know, up, up my, my back and head, kind of that, that tingling. Uh, as, the, um, as the words were coming across the screen, she was being, you know, asking her questions and uh, some of those felt very alive. Mm. I think, yeah. Uh, when you mean at the beginning when she's sitting in front of the computer yeah, screen? Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. So, so the device of the uh, the progressive text, the device of the, the music, I think the, the content uh, just uh, it felt very alive. Hmm. Um, and then could you wait before you move on, could you describe I love this word and we use it a lot, alive. What what does that feel like? What does it felt very alive? What does alive feel like in the body? Um something that I can actually detect and, uh, and oh, oh, no. Well, I think alive for me is uh, distinct from dead. And, <laughs> and I think that I attach like um, some feelings that I experience as, uh, as coming from a, a place that's like long ago and mm. perhaps uh, um, uh, emo emotional or traumatic versus like something that's alive in the moment and arising in the moment and feelings that are at the moment. Mm. Oh yeah. Okay. Pause. Yeah. So for all of us that it, <laughs> so beautiful. Yeah. If you can feel, can you feel Victor? I mean, that, that is, uh, and, and anybody resonate with that? I, that was such a beautiful, definition description of what's alive yes okay amazing <laughs> um yeah so as we sorry victor i'm just gonna um just one one piece for the group this is this is really even more than the provocation this is us as we share feeling each other and noticing what victor sharing brings up in you so it it continues to evolve and build um, Victor, you wanted to say more? I'll give space for others. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. Um, okay. So Becca and Brandon, good. <laughs> um, I felt inspired to share about my experience of aliveness too, that for me, aliveness during the video felt like, a like pulling in, like wanting to learn a little bit more, feeling like a little bit more attached or connected or like a pushing away, like a resistance, but like I could just feels very present and strong either of those feelings. Can you point to Becca, is, was there a particular moment you felt drawn in or you felt like the pushing away? Um. I think the the parasite the, the, <laughs> the parasite parts gave me a lot of aliveness just they brought up feelings they brought up like confusion and and drawn inness and anger about like what does it mean this representation of the world that I live in as a parasite mm -hmm. um it's so such a simplified version of something that feels so complex and confusing and it just brought up a lot for me mm. thank you that's um it's it's really great exercise and um, not always easy to see if you can identify the moment you began to feel that repulsion or whatever, or the closing down or the shutting down or the contraction. Um, it's, it's kind of, it's remarkable. It often comes down to like, you were able to identify like the parasite. Um, and when we can identify, or it's like, yeah, there's a conversation. You're like, I didn't feel good about that. And it's like, but can you trace it back? When was the moment when you started to not feel good? that's usually there's usually something that begins to grind right there yeah that's great i think i said this before but it's just like like the more specific we can be about our experience the more it starts to un 
unfold for us. You yeah, hold on one second, I'm pausing on the parasite. That brought up some feelings for me too. Rebecca, do you want to go any deeper with the parasite or do we want to invite someone else who has had an experience of it to unpack it a little bit? One thing I think I could say about the parasite is it reminded me of other representations of society as this um, just completely negative thing, like the, the Matrix and um, just other videos I've seen with this similar vein. And like a question that was coming up for me as I was feeling into this resistance was like, what does it, what does it do for us to, to, to view these kinds of videos that kind of um, uh, help us see what might really be going on? What, how does it actually help? That was mm -hmm. a question. Is coming from a place of feeling helpless and mm -hmm. scared about what these videos are really trying to show, and like wanting to understand, like, is this really going to do anything though? Okay, <laughs> good, good. Okay, so, um, so just here and now, is there is that fear, that helplessness? It's such a, a beautiful word, and I think more common feeling than we like to admit is that present for you in your body i feel definitely a yes and i'm getting a message from my body that's saying that it doesn't want to 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 feel into it in front of everyone beautiful Thank you, body. <laughs> okay, great. Amazing. Thank you, Becca. Do, do you, can I move on or in, please bring it up again if you want to, if the body changes, it's mine. <laughs> Thanks, Tyler. Yeah. Okay. Um, John? Hi. Hi. I don't know what to make of my experience. And I think it's back because of like the momentum that we had when we were doing the, when we were drawing ourselves to our awareness of our body. So I'm not sure if it was already built then, but um, in relation to the video, I felt like I wanted to allow my body to just move the way it wanted to move. So it was weird, like at, in different tempos and different rhythms, my body was stirring like a pot, swinging, thrusting, and I don't really know what to make of it. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I guess I would ask you how you, how it felt. This is curious, like in, in my mind, I said, what, what does this mean? <laughs> like, yeah. um, at certain points in the video, I felt like the thrusting, like, had an increased tempo mm -hmm. and at other points it would calm. Mm. Sometimes there would be a stir at the axis of my chest area. Mm. It's beautiful. So even, so if it didn't need to make any sense at all, then as you, you know, even as you describe the experience, what is, what, what do you feel? What's the sensation or anything you care to share? I guess the tone of my voice is just curiosity. <laughs> um, it's, it's like fun. It's like, <laughs> it's fun just like dancing to it. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. It's, I mean, I, I feel something fun listening to you describe your experience. 
and also something a little um, mysterious. And maybe it's your curiosity or what you're calling the curiosity, but there's something um, delightful actually in what you describe. <laughs> How do you feel now? I have to say I feel self-conscious. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's beautiful. I see, I mean, I, I can see that, uh, yeah, people are uh, with you. Yeah. Is there any more you wanna say or would you like me to? Move on, were you looking for an answer? <laughs> I don't know, um, we can move on. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna, um, it's hard with that. Like, do the hands appear in order? Like uh, Peter's first right now, okay. Peter, go ahead. And then I may take the, um, I may just pick at intuition. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot happening. Um, the, the through line was a sense of frustration of trying to feel into my body, but then like having the kind of the more cognitive access um, and so then I just was tempted to go in that space, but then it's kind of like, and so there's like a mild frustration there. Um, and then like the, the nostalgia first when it came like the, the matrix type scene, that emotion. Um, and there's like a mild attraction to the, the actress. So like a mild arousal that, mm -hmm. that happened. And there's like a, the shyness in my body, like mentioning that right now, because I don't want like the collective to feel my arousal. Um, and then when the, the scene started, uh, when they with like the pixelated stuff, uh, like a sense of cringe, uh, especially when the, the guy with the beard came on, welcome to game B. Um, and then kind of like breaking the temporal boundaries, like the cringe was greater when I first saw it, I saw this a couple of times, but the, the, it was still there. Uh, Peter, can I pause you? Because mm -hmm. I love this, I love the cringe. What is the cringe? Could you describe a little bit what happens for you sensation-wise? Just to like go meta first before I go to sensation, it's like, um, it's funny that it's localized to that guy in particular when I kind of like thought it was like, you know, it was expanded before. Hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that was an interesting insight that I gained. Hmm. And uh, when I feel into that, it just uh, kind of like, just the, like the saying like, ooh, don't do that. You know, like, like kind of like, just like, you know, like just let's not do that. Um, I don't know what emotions would put but that kind of like that, that maneuver wants to come online. Hmm. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, I'm trying to feel when I'm listening to you, I'm also um, working to feel what it is you're feeling. So to make sure I'm understanding you. Hmm. But then when the, um, that went away. And then there was sort of like a sense of adventure, um, mm. a journey, like, oh, I got excited, like, especially mm. when we went to the, the second scene. Um, uh, yeah, and I can go on some more, more spicy stuff too, but I mean, I'll just pause there. Okay. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you. I'll take a, a couple more and then maybe we'll see if we're having any does anyone have any reaction before I move on to the next person to what's being said here rather than the video? By any of our speakers. Okay. Great. Um, all right. So, Rosa. Hi. Hi. <sighs> so, um, we'll just start talking about what came up as we were watching. So the first thing I noticed was before we started watching, when you said what we were going to be watching, there was like this, oh, goody, 
because this is something I wanted to to see, but I you know just had not had the time to watch it, and I I still want to watch it in its entirety. So there was the like kind of um, you know waking up kind of a movement anticipation, I guess, and then. Oh, I was I felt very connected when there was the girl who was typing in her questions like I, I felt very um, connected and curious. And then, you know, there was the anticipation and the game A, game B. And then when game B started, I. I don't know, it was like what the exact moment was, but it was kind of growing sense of tension in me like mm. and um it was really hard physically um and it was like a tightening in my gut and i could feel as i was being present with it that it was like this this tension between really really wanting to like this because i believe in the ultimate message it's giving and at the same time like parts of my body were like oh you know kind of like the the cringe that Peter was talking about, but almost more of a clench, you know, mm. like, oh, uh, I want to like it. And, and, and yeah. And so, you know, there was my mind saying, okay, well, don't be critical, just find mm. something that you appreciate in it and whatever. But so it was just a tremendous amount of tension. Mm. Can you, um, um, I mean, you were beginning to do that. Uh, I'm just curious where, was it right? when she goes into the game when she's opening her eyes and not at first i felt like i still had some kind of sense of openness there but kind of like the longer it went like at some point like i just felt like i don't know like like i was trying to interpret it as a creative tension you know like we're talking about game b and 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 sustainability and yet it's all being computer mediated and it's like i missed her body and it's like i could understand in some yeah. on some level that that it has to be this way so that we can do this picture mm. it was like such a tension between like oh my gosh is it is the whole thing going to look like a computer game from now on right, versus right, right. versus the topic that we're talking about right and it was just like oh you know like the wanting to like it and the wanting to be true to my experience and the wanting to to not to have constructive responses rather than critical responses and and yeah so it was like a whole big ball of conflict inside oh, me thank you i the thing you just said that felt really that resonated in my body was i missed her body i felt that too when she became an avatar and when they when they went into the digital space i felt when she's opening her eyes i felt i felt disembodied it's like i had been kind of resonating with her as a character you're sitting in front of the computer screen with her you're meant to be seeing through her right and then she goes into the game and it's like where's my body what happened that was my experience but I love how you put it just then when you said I missed her body. There was like a a longing there, like, oh, can we go back to that? <laughs> yeah, as I yeah, I was just um resonating with you. Does that does anything I say resonate with you? Um I just am noticing in the present right now, I'm feeling a little bit of like um. I don't know, uh, vulnerability hangover. Yeah, like yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. like noticing in my head, like, oh no, are there people here who were involved in creating it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That wrong. And you know, I'm just kind of like noticing myself closed down in that way. Okay. So I'm noticing that that's happening for a lot of people and, and I get it. Um, so yeah, Rosa, would it help if I asked, like, did anyone, did people feel how, were people resonating with Rose, what Rosa had to say? Can we give Rosa some support? Yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah. That helps. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I get it. I mean, my dream is that we have a space, Rosa, where I mean, where we can really hear each other like whatever the experience is, 
that because we're capable of that, like really being open to what you have to share. Yeah, thank you. I, I feel more relaxed now. I do really want to say that I really, 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 in addition to safe space, I really value creativity. Mm. And so I just really value any creative initiative, regardless of how imperfect it might be. So I, I feel I just, that. Yeah. That's, yeah, I really, I feel, I can, could feel the conflict in you though. Like, I want to like this. I think a lot of us feel that way. I had that experience with this video. Um, yeah, I really wanted to like it more than I did. Thank I you feel, so much. Yeah. I feel complete, Skylar. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Rosa. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I don't know. Uh, let's hear from Joe. Well, this last hour has been pretty intense for me. Um, as far as the video, um, I noticed almost immediately, I think it was the, when she types, um, the question, is the world falling apart? Like this rush of anxiety up through my throat. Um, and the, the whole rest of the video, I noticed and I had, I had watched this already back on Monday when it was first released um, and was actually able to be super, super present for it. Um, but, but watching it this time, it was like that anxiety came up and I felt like there was a, um, like just glazed over the rest of the time. Like I couldn't really connect mm. with it. Mm. Hmm. yeah yeah that's a big question that she types hmm Yeah. How do you feel, Joe? Or what's going on for you? I feel a little bit more settled having expressed that. Like I feel uh, heat, a lot of heat in my back. Mm. where I was previously a little bit numb, I think. Mm -mm. <sighs> mm. Yeah, I, um, I'll say something, Joe, just while you're feeling, see if it resonates at all. Um, it is often my experience that we say, we make really big statements um, offhandedly or quickly, or we gloss over them. And like, if you read the news unconsciously, it's tolerable, it's, it's, a, it's like, it's almost like you have to be somewhat numb to, endure <laughs> to um to take what's coming it's like you know we've adapted almost this numbness so that we can't and we don't let those things in and then um if you bring more of your embodied awareness to the experience 
a statement like, is the world or a question like, is the world falling apart? Um, or is this fake or is this real? Or, you know, those questions she asked at the beginning yeah. are like, I mean, they're devastating questions. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, one, um, I think one of the aspects of the healing of the culture is feeling, is bringing, is yeah. returning to being able to feel the devastation yeah. in that question. Yeah. Mm. What's happening for you now? If, if you feel comfortable to share. Yeah, I think I've, I've shared everything that I've, that I've wanted to share, you know, mm. with this group. Um, it was very helpful to be able to share that. Mm. Yeah, that's, um, Thank you so much for sharing. I really resonate with that. That's often my experience. It's like, um, and I can, it can feel very isolating um, when you feel like you're the only person who's like actually processing. I'm not saying that that's what's happening here, but it is often my experience that I'm in a room um, and this used to be my experience when I was working with activist groups or in climate work where things were said in such an offhand way, statements were made that if you actually took them in, it would be almost unbearable. And when you're a feeler, when you're a feeling person, you're often the person in the room handling, doing the emotional labor or taking on the feelings that aren't being felt. So um, yeah, so, and, and, and bringing them into connection, like bringing them into a safe space is it's always helpful for me to not feel alone because it, it is that isolating feeling like Ugh. oh my god everybody else i'm not saying again this isn't your experience but i might feel like everybody's enjoying this movie the matrix for example it's like it's a blockbuster people seem to be like eating popcorn and like having fun and i'm like Ugh. you know is this what's happening? Yeah. Um, so we have to close. I do want to hear Craig. Hi, I want to hear from you. Can you share quickly? Hey. Yeah, let me just sit this over. Hey, everybody. Yeah, and maybe I'll just make a comment or, well, um, I just want to say that, um, you know, just, just listening to everyone, um, you know, um, just been appreciating the space that Skylar was holding. And for me, the really like the slowing down mm. and what's so hard sometimes, like Skylar was just mentioning, it's like, there's a pace to, you could say game A or just like our lives. And what I just been appreciating is like space to like actually slow down. Even now it's like, it's hard to do because everything that we're not feeling starts to like be here. <laughs> and it's like a training. It's like a real thing to like, learn how to navigate that and i just really appreciate joe and rosa everybody who spoke and and skylar thank you because you know it's like one thing to talk about all of these things but to really learn together how to do this like so fundamentally like feel my feelings you know like kids do it and then we seem to you know lose it to whatever degree so i'm just appreciative this is like my first time here so peter thank you for also doing this and uh, I look forward to learning from all of you and continuing the journey. So thank you. Great to see you, Skylar. Thank you. Craig's a great feeler. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, I wanna close. Victor, did you have something to add? I just wanna give you a chance in case you have a follow-up to your comment earlier. Thank you very much, Skylar. No, I wanted to, to share that um, I appreciated what you did uh, in that moment where I finished speaking and uh, you held me and kind of and right, gave voice to the energy that you were feeling. Like I felt like this um this really radiant joy in that in feeling seen. Mm. So 
Oh, absolutely. I know that radiant joy that for me, that's the joy of being felt. Oh, I wish that for all of us. <laughs> um, thank you. If you didn't have a chance to speak um, or didn't want to speak or whatever your experience was, uh, one of the constraints here is our time. Um, and so we're doing something pretty audacious in just an hour. But um, yeah, if you have anything you need to follow up with me on or want to follow up with me on, please feel free to email me. Um, and uh, Peter, can we ask for submissions? If anyone has something they want to see in this group, they can email me or? Yeah, so um, just, just two things on my end. So if you want to email um, us, you can email both of us here, the emails. Um, Skylar, if you don't want them to send you another email, you can do that. So anyone in this group, at least, email one of us to um, what you would like to see next time, maybe a prompt, a video. Um, and if anyone, I'm, I think I'll, I'll post this one on the YouTube channel because it'd be nice to follow. Uh, this would be like perfect to follow the uh, be conversation. But if you said anything today and you didn't want to be on YouTube, just email me at the, the Proton Mail and I'll edit you out before I post. Uh, and I'll probably post uh, uh, tomorrow sometime. So please do that uh, today. Amazing. Thank you so much. See you next week if you want to come back. Have an embodied week.